Amen. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, I'll be speaking briefly on a topic I have titled Building Capacity. Building Capacity. For us as Christians, it is important for us to improve our ways of worship, our ways of communication, our ways of fellowship with God. And that is why it is important for every Christian in order to grow and attain that glorious act to build capacity. Amen. So this afternoon, you will join me as we run together through the scriptures to look at what and how we can build capacity to live a godly life, how we can build capacity in our fellowship, in our relationship with God. Amen. To build capacity is to make progress. To build capacity is to advance. To build capacity is to carefully prepare. To build capacity is for you to move from one stage to another stage. Amen. It is a progressive development in the life of anyone or even in your career when you are building capacity. When a man builds capacity, it is in order to achieve fulfillment, to achieve setting goals. And it is my prayer this afternoon, by the help of the Holy Spirit, that you and I will be able to build capacity in our relationship with God. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Take note of the word, all things. All things. Because God is the one that strengthens. Can you tell your neighbor, say, God is the one that strengthens. It does not matter your qualification. It does not matter your connection. It is God that strengthens. And this is why you see, even the rich also cry. You find so many well-to-do men or women prospering in their career. You will just hear they commit suicide. It is God that strengthens. And I pray this afternoon that the Lord will strengthen someone in Jesus' name. Building capacity as a child of God is making deliberate improvements. Deliberate improvements. To grow in your relationship. By way of worship. By way of studying the word of God. By way of fellowship. This is how you build capacity as a child of God. And when you build capacity through relationship with God, God stirs up a transformation in your life. When you build capacity in your fellowship, in your relationship with God, you get to a place where you touch God and God release that transformation to you. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 12, can we see Romans 12 verse 1 and 2? Because of my time, I will be a bit fast for the benefit of those who are taking down notes. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Anyone who has built up capacity to attain this verse 2, we just read. If you have built up enough capacity not to be conformed by the things of the world, but rather to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you will not struggle to fulfill the verse 1 of it. It will not be difficult for you to know your body is a living sacrifice. 
it will not be difficult. You will not struggle with it to give yourself, to give everything you have because you would have discovered that it is God that strengthens. The strength you and I need to be able to build up capacity that we can resist the darts that the devil will throw at you, the challenges that will come through your way in life, whether at work, whether in the marriage, whether even in your family or in the church. That grace comes from Christ. Only Christ can strengthen a man. Praise the Lord. In this kingdom, building capacity enables you to stand out among equals. When you have built capacity in a relationship with God, you are now in a lock-up relationship with God. You are now in an intimacy with God. You are working with God and God knows you. Then you don't need to struggle. The Lord will place you through the transforming of your mind, through the renewing of your mind. He will place you to be above only. Praise the Lord. The Lord will place you, the Lord will place someone to be above only in the name of Jesus. Anyone that builds capacity in fellowship with God, he or she gets unlimited access. Unlimited access to God. If time permits us, we are going to look at some Bible characters who were able to build capacity to God. With, with God and how they were able to have unlimited access to God. Any man who has built capacity in, capacity in God, such a man can always draw from the unlimited power of God. Amen. In Genesis chapter 12, in Genesis chapter 12, God encountered a man called Abraham and God gave him an instruction. Genesis 12, verse 1. God asked him, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, leave your nation, leave your country to a place I will show you. And why was God telling Abraham to do this? Because God wanted to transform Abraham. God wanted to renew the mind of Abraham. If Abraham's mind is not renewed, he will not obey God. It takes only a transformed mind to be able to leave his father's house, leave his kindred. Leaving his father's house, he was leaving behind his inheritance. He was leaving behind everything that made up the, the man he has become. That has given him the life that he had. He was leaving everything behind. Brethren, if God must transform your mind, if God will renew your mind, then you must learn how to leave certain things. Praise the Lord. It is important you must learn how to let some certain things go. Many Christians today, they pray not because God will not answer their prayer, but because they lack capacity. You find them even after praying, they are still doubting. Even after praying, and God is answering them, they are still struggling with God. Even in getting their desired results. When you pray and you trust God, if you don't have a transformed mind, if you don't have a renewed mind, it becomes difficult to stay and wait. In the story we looked at in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham, God was telling him something in chapter 12 of Genesis. He said, now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country. From your family, from your father's house, to a land I will show you. If God were to speak this day to any one of us, we would definitely doubt. We would struggle within us. We would want to apply our intellectual understanding. Does this make sense? If somebody just tell you, look, I'm packing my load, I'm leaving this place. I'm leaving my family. And you ask, okay, so where are you going to? He said, I don't know. It would not make sense to any one of us. And that is where it is important for you and I to build capacity. So that our mind can be renewed through the transformation of the word of God. Because when you are transformed, 
You are renewed in your mind. You don't think ordinarily anymore. You begin to understand because you are working with God. You begin to understand how God works. He's a new system. He's another level. You begin to trust God. You begin to depend on God. Completely. And this is what God expects from you and I. And I pray that this afternoon, the Lord will help someone to build capacity in the name of Jesus. God was asking Abraham to get out of his house. And if you look at Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, God was already in a different dimension with Abraham. In Genesis 17 verse 1, God was telling Abraham, declaring his ability. Don't doubt me. He said, I am the almighty. He says, when Abraham was 99 years old, this is almost 25 years after God told him to leave his father's house in Genesis chapter 12. 25 years after, God was speaking to Abraham. He appeared to him and he said to him, I am the almighty. I am the El Shaddai. Walk before me and be that perfect. Brethren, if there's anything God needs from you, if there's anything God desires from you, is to see that we walk before him and be blameless. Unconditional trust. Not relenting on your human understanding or on the physical things you are saying or even what the system is saying. So a man who wants to walk with God must build capacity to the extent that even though he's in the physical, he begins to walk with the spiritual. That is why Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed. Though you are in the world, do not be conformed. Amen. Amen. A renewed mind is a transformed mind. When a mind is transformed, it becomes a new mind. Every Christian that must walk with God must be renewed through the transformation of the word of God. It is the word of God in you that transforms you, that keeps you going, that stabilizes you, that when others are panicking, when others are losing hope, when all hope is gone, you stay stable. Did you not read in the scripture that Jesus was in a boat with his disciples? They have seen all the miracles that Jesus has been doing. Many of them were following Jesus because of those disciples. And yet, when they encountered a storm, they were shouting, Master, don't you care for us to perish? Because they didn't have a renewed mind. They have not been transformed. To the things of the world, to the standard of the world. The weather was making them to doubt, even though the master was in their boat. Are you a Christian? And you still have reason to doubt, even when you come to church and you pray? Because I have seen Christians tell stories of how they were sleeping in the night, and somebody come to press them in the neck where they are sleeping. I have seen Christians tell all kinds of stories, and you begin to wonder, where is your faith? May the Lord transform our minds in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we be renewed through the transformation of, our, uh, transformation of our minds in Jesus' name. God told Abraham in Genesis 17, he says, walk before me and be that perfect. After 25 years of God telling him to follow me, leave your father's house, leave your country. Abraham was still trusting God. Will you trust God that way? You need to build capacity. Tell somebody, say build capacity. You need to trust God that way. They that wait upon the Lord. What does the Bible say? You must learn to trust him. Trusting is depending on him completely, totally. Many people say they are waiting on God. Sister, what are you doing about this problem? We are waiting on God. But in that waiting, they are running a They are going from one place to another. 
May you not run it as in the name of Jesus. May the Lord stabilize your feet. May it transform your mind in the name of Jesus. When a man builds capacity, such a man can develop certain skills and he can improve his knowledge of God. I will say that again. When a man builds capacity, such a man can develop certain skills, uncommon skills, and can improve in his knowledge of God. Many Christians, after Sunday service, their Bible is closed to another Sunday service. I hope you believe that. Many Christians. They don't have any, no enthusiasm, nothing moves them to open the Bible. May you not be such a Christian in the name of Jesus. Because this is why today many people say, where is the power? We don't see the power at work. God is not a father Christmas. He is much more than that. So it is not only when you have a shopping, you bring your needs to God. God, I want this. God, I want this. God, I want this. God, I want this. And after that, you are off. God will not see you. God wants to be involved in a committed relationship with you. He wants to see you waiting on him, trusting him. Even when it seems like things are not right, that is the time God wants to see your faith. When it seems like all hope is gone. When it's beyond human comprehension. God steps in. Praise the Lord. Like I said because of my time. We will quickly run. And look at how we can build capacity. In what way can we build capacity. You want to grow. You want to be able to touch God somewhere. You want to be able to get to that realm. Where you can relate with God. Like Abraham in Genesis 14. God encountered him. The Bible says God appeared to him. 99 years old man. The wife was already barren or menopause or something. She was already out of this world. She cannot give birth. If you want to look at human science. And God says, I am the almighty. I am the almighty. And that is what God is saying to someone today. To trust him. That he is the almighty. The El Shaddai. He said, walk before me and be that perfect. When God said, walk before me, he wants you in a relationship. He wants you to walk with him side by side. Father and son relationship. That is what God desires. So if you have been praying and been trusting God for something, and that result has not come, check your relationship with God. What is it like? How much capacity have you built in that relationship with God? Are you of double mind? Or your mind is stabilized, stable in God? Because if you have a double mind, you can't go far. The Bible says we must be diligent. We must be steadfast. We must stand strong. And all of these things are possible if only you will renew your mind by the transformation that God's word gives to us. When you close the Bible, you don't attend Bible on Sunday school. You don't attend if the Bible study. You don't, you don't attend any devotional service. How can you grow? A child who goes to school, on the first day, he opens his book, and after that he closes the book, and the exam day comes, will he be able to write anything? He didn't do any study. How would that be possible? You cannot trust God if you don't know him. Amen. To so build capacity, number one, if you are writing, you must take instruction. You must take instruction. Abraham took instruction. Genesis 12. God was telling him. Before now, the Bible didn't tell us of any relationship between Abraham and God. But God told him, get out of your father's house. Get out of your country. Get out from your kindred. Get out from everything that matters to you. And Abraham obeyed. That was the instruction God was giving to him. And in that obedience, 
God started working with Abraham. He started transforming Abraham. And Abraham became a new minded man. Praise the Lord. So in order to build capacity as Christians, number one, we must be ready to take instruction. Tell somebody, take instruction. Amen. We must be ready to learn how to listen. Because the Holy Spirit that comes into you the minute you become born again is a communicator. He's there to teach you. Jesus promised, he said, I will send you a comforter. He's there with you. We get too busy, our heart strays away. We don't allow our mind to be renewed or transformed. Because we close our Bible all the time. Because we don't study. So it becomes difficult for us to hear even when the Holy Spirit is speaking. He still speaks. The Holy Spirit still speaks. He is at work in our lives. You desire to come to church this Sunday morning. But it was not you that made it happen. I hope we know that. Yesterday, you have told yourself, okay, today, some of us, maybe, some per se, I mean, what do you say it in Norwegian? Some per se. Is that what you say? Sometimes, somehow. How do you say that? Some per se. Uh -huh. Your mind was like this. Maybe you will come to church if I wake up early, if I can catch the bus. Oh, if I get a drive to a ride, take me to, I will go. That was your mind. Why some already ironed their cloth, they were prepared for Sunday service. But however, that's part of your preparation. It was God that made it happen. Praise the Lord. Because if when you are slept last night, anything could have happened. And this morning, they say he slept, he didn't wake up. We have had cases like that. Healthy people. People who had important dates with destiny. They slept and they didn't wake up. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Number one, we must learn to take instruction. Number two, we must learn to listen because the Holy Spirit still speaks. Number three, we must study, study, take our time to search the scriptures. Be a good student that wants to pass his exam. The only way you can know God is through the word of God. Because the word of God is God. So when you study the word of God, you are studying God. It wouldn't be difficult to work with him. You will know when to ask questions. Do you know you can ask God questions? And he's obligated to answer you. The story was told of a dear man of God who died and he went to heaven. And when in heaven, he, he met our Lord Jesus. And they played for him the video, the clips of his life on earth. And he was watching, he was watching. This dear man of God was so powerful, he did so many mighty things for God. But at the time, he had serious problems. His wife left him, his children left him, his ministry went down. A lot of things, the vicissitude of life came on him. So when he died eventually and he got to heaven, he met Jesus. And he was asking questions. And they played the clip of his life for him. How he was doing many things. He was reaching out, like this month is our month of reaching out. He was visiting brother. He, he was doing a lot of things. Then he came to the stage... Where he had problems, his wife, everything. He lost his ministry, lost his job. He was afflicted, all manner of things. And he noticed that in that video clip, all along when he was doing mighty things from God, he was only seeing two footprints. He was only seeing two footprints. A sign to show that the Holy Spirit was always there with him. Jesus was always there with him. But when he got to the time where he had those problems, he saw just one footprint. And after they've shown him everything, he decided to ask questions. And he said, Lord, so you left me when I was in my very low state in life. I can see only one footprint. And this was the period I needed you most. This was the time I lost my job. I was kicked out of my accommodation. This was the time I lost my ministry. This was the time my children left me. And now I can see only one footprint. Lord, what happened? And Jesus told him. 
He said, at that particular time, I was carrying you. And that is why you can see only one footprint. There is never a time that Jesus can leave you. You know the story in the Bible of the three Hebrew brothers that they were threatening to throw into a fullness of fire. They saw the fire by themselves. And before they throw them in, the king asked that they increase the, the velocity of that fire. And they threw them in there. They didn't compromise. Why? Because they have built capacity. And that is why this morning I have come to share with us the importance of building capacity if we must live a godly life. If we must live a victorious life. If we must live a life where we will see the results that we so desire. And I pray this afternoon that the Lord will take us there in the name of Jesus. If a man must build capacity, such a man can develop certain skills and improve in his knowledge of God. In Proverbs 1, 7, it tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. May we not be foolish in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy 2, 15, it says, study to show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. Unto God, a workman. We must study. It is an order. It is a command. Because if you don't study, you cannot understand. If you don't study, then the devil is ever willing to fill that space, that vacuum, with his own knowledge. And I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. In 2 Timothy 3.16, he tells us, that the word of God is given by the inspiration of God for our own instruction to righteousness. The word of God is given. This word of God is given to you and I by the inspiration of God for our own instruction in righteousness. Brethren, what are you doing with the word of God? That has already been allocated. It's given to you. Inspired by God. Back up with God. If you read the promised you will know how to commit God to your situation. But when you don't read it, you don't understand it, it becomes a challenge. And this is why many of us will lack that capacity. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. To build capacity, we must obey. That is another key word, obedience. We must obey. In Genesis 12, God spoke to Abraham, and Abraham obeyed. It is key to obey. To obey. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient. Isaiah 1.19. If you are willing and obedient. You will eat the best of the land. I pray for those of us who will apply our hearts. To the word of God. And be obedient to the word of God. You will eat the best of this land in Jesus name. I said you will eat the best of this land in Jesus name. So it is important. God told Abraham in Genesis 17, we already read, he said, walk before me and be perfect. To walk with God is to be serving faithfully as a steward. In this month of reach out, may I ask how many of us have reached out to our fellow brothers? How many of us? Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. How many of us have taken time, genuinely out of your way, to call somebody? Hello, brother, how are you doing? I just thought of you and I want to say hello to you. Hello, sister. It is well with you. The Lord strengthens you. I know it is difficult this time, but soon and very soon, you will get your desired result. It is important for us to do that. We must learn to reach out. Amen. Tell somebody, say reach out. When you reach out, God reach out to you too. Jesus said, if you lift me up, I will draw men unto myself. If you lift him up, he will draw men unto himself. Another thing again, we can build capacity in our place of prayer. In our place of prayer. I will round up here. I will not go further. I will just expand more on this. We can build capacity in our place of prayers. We must learn not how to only ask God when we need something. Many of us will come to God like a father at Christmas. All what you want God to do. Can you prepare a list of the things you want to do for God? 
That is what a renewed mind, a transformed mind does. That is what a mind who has built capacity, that is what he can do. See, every Sunday, as far as this thing is there, until we get our own permanent place here, I will be giving a token of my salary for this course. I want to help to make sure that God has a house, a house of our own, a place of our own. It could be in another dimension. It could be in any other place. Not only in giving. It could be in the place you are called to serve as a worker in the house of God. Be diligent. Be committed. Be dedicated. Be devoted. Don't wait until somebody is telling you to do something before you have to do it. Take initiative. Be deliberate about it. It is your father's house. This is how you walk with God. Because these are the things that God looks at. Praise the Lord. Don't just pray alone for all your needs. Most of the things we pray for is actually God's business to give it to us. Most of the things you and I, we are praying for. In the Lord's prayer, I say, give us this day our daily bread. So your daily bread is already secured. But you, you have not built enough capacity to understand this. You think it's by three, four, five jobs. You think it's the hustling, running up and down. No, it is much more than, than that. I pray that the Lord will bring you onto understanding in Jesus' name. In the story we looked at about Abraham, as if it was not enough, the man at 99 years, almost 25 years after, God finally gave him a son. Finally. Then God was making demand of that son. Is God wicked? How could God had taken 25 years before he answered him? He gave him a promise. Before he fulfilled that promise. 25 years. And now he has the promise while he's still rejoicing with that one promise. And God is asking him to give it back. Is God wicked? Is God unconsiderate? Why would God do that? Many times when God denies us things, he wants to, to stretch our faith. He wants to test us. He wants us to grow in it. He wants to watch what you will do while you are waiting. Will you run at Tasketa? Have you built enough capacity in your prayer place? Do you listen? Do you study? These are the things God wants to know. He wants to test you. So when he's doing that with you, he's ultimately preparing something bigger for you. If Abraham had resisted and denied God, that request God made for him, even though it was the only one child he had, Abraham wouldn't have become father of nations. He wouldn't have fathered many sons. So nothing is too difficult. Nothing should be too heavy or too much for us to give for the sake of Christ. Amen. You will see when Abraham offered that son, you know what happened? In Genesis 22 verse 16, God came down. He told Abraham, I swear by myself. You will not find that twice in the scriptures. He said, now, I know you trust me. And I swear by myself. And God started releasing out blessings upon Abraham. To trust God pays. But you need to build capacity. To get to that level where you can touch God. Amen. And the only way you can get to that level. Is through the transformation. And the renewing of our minds. Amen. Another story we would have looked at again. Is Anna. You know Anna prayed. Anna have been praying. I think Anna waited for 19 years as well. Anna was trusting God for his son to silence her mockers. I don't know what you, I don't know what anyone is trusting God for today. Anna had mockers. She was married, but that was still not sufficient. They were still mocking her. She didn't have a child. Brethren, the world will always mock you. It was designed like that, especially when you are a child of God. And this is why you need to build the capacity we are talking about. Because when you build capacity, you will know how to go about it. And you know what Hannah did? Every year, the Bible says Anna goes to a place called Shiloh. They go down to worship God there. Yearly, Anna was crying to God for 19 years. 
Then Anna built enough capacity. Then Anna decided to touch God somewhere. You know what Anna did? Let us see. Praise the Lord. Let's see 1 Samuel, verse, 1 Samuel 1 verse 10. 1 Samuel 1 verse 10. Okay, if you can project 10 and 11 together, I will appreciate. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel 1 verse 10. The Bible says, and she was in bitterness. She was in a state of pain. She felt so bad inside of her. For 19 years, I have been mocked. Still, she has been faithful. Never a time the Bible told us that Anna withdrew back her service from God. Or doubted God. At this point, she has built enough capacity. And Anna cried to God. She was in bitterness of soul. From her soul. Then she prayed unto the Lord and wept sorely. Some other Bible version will put it in different form. To get to this state, Anna has built enough capacity. And in verse 11, you see what happened. Let's see the prayer I prayed. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the afflictions of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no reason come upon his head. Anna knew how to touch God because she has built enough capacity. Anna had a renewed mind. 19 years, she was transformed. She was a different person. The husband kept consoling Anna all the way. Don't worry, my love for you is more than 10 sons. But that was not sufficient for Anna. When you build capacity, you will know what God can do. And you can hold God to his promises. After Anna cried like this, God was moved. God was provoked. God did not only give Anna a son. He gave Anna a son that was a king maker and a king remover. He gave Anna a son that was a prophet unto his own nation, the nation of Israel. You can provoke God like that. Over situation, this system, or anyone has used to mock you. Maybe you have failed several times. You have attempted business, it collapsed. I don't know what it is. It could be an affliction. It could be a sickness. It could be anything. If only you will learn how to touch God. Building up enough capacity to understand that it is God that strengthens men. Not our knowledge. Not our acquisition. And Anna was able to cry to God. He entered into a vow and God could not resist that. You know what the Bible says? He said God cannot resist a broken and a contract heart. God said a broken and a contract heart I will not ignore. God was moved. The same way God was moved to provocation. When he saw Abraham giving him the only son, it has taken 25 years. And God said, I swear by myself. This afternoon, I don't know what is your predicament. I don't know what stage of vicissitude you find yourself right now. But what I can assure you, if only you can build off enough capacity today and trust God, you will touch God in a place where God will release your desired results for you. Is it in your marriage? Is it about child? Is it about a job? Is it concerning your career? In every area. The God we are talking about, the psalmist says in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. They and all that went therein. Let us rise up on our feet. I want you to begin to speak to God, to tell him, Father, I have heard your word today. Help me, Lord, to build capacity. To withstand every fairy doubt that the enemies will throw at me. Help me to stay stable. Help me never to doubt you. Is somebody praying this afternoon?
talk to him. Maybe you are here or even following us online and you've heard what God can do when you build capacity and you want to trust God this afternoon to help you build that capacity. There's grace available. You can talk to him now. You can talk to him now. The Bible says, who saith a thing and it come to pass when the Lord has not ordained it. Every good and perfect promise comes from above. Whatever God has promised you, he is standard sure he will fulfill it. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. You can trust God to say, Father, help me to build capacity. Lord, I want to be transformed tonight. I want to be transformed. Lord, give me a renewed mind, a renewed mind. Help me to know how to touch a place in you like Hannah did. Help me, Lord, how to get key and connected to your word. Teach me. You can talk to God. You can tell him, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. David prayed that prayer in Psalm 51 verse 10. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Maybe that could be your prayer. You can tell God, restore me, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit is our communicator. But Lord, give me the understanding. So when he speaks, I can listen. I can hear. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. We are going to pray two prayers shortly. The first prayer, I want to join my faith with you and the church. If you are here and you are trusting God. Maybe you have built enough capacity, but still yet you are not getting it. You have struggled so much. They have shared two examples, Anna and Abraham. And now you are willing to give it up to God, to say, Father, take control. I hand over this territory to you. If you are here, you will just put your hand on your chest, and every other one of us will begin to pray for you. And I want you at this time, if you can speak in tongues, please go ahead and begin to speak to God. Talk to God concerning as many that are placing their hand on their chest to say, Father, locate them. Locate them, O oh Lord. By your power to change, power to transform, Father, locate this one and meet them at the point of their needs. Let their trust in you never be broken. Father, answer them like you answered Hannah. Answer them like you did for Abraham. Help them, Lord, to walk before you and be perfect in the name of Jesus. Father, today we want to commit as many, oh God, are trusting you to say, Father, they hand over the steering wheels of their life to you. Daddy, we ask you, take charge in the name of Jesus. Father, take charge, take charge, take charge. Take control of their lives. Take control of their situations. Father, let the best happen to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, your sons and daughters have trusted you. Lord, they have built capacity. They have stayed waiting in their place of prayer. Lord, like you remembered Hannah. Lord, like you remembered Noah. Like you remembered Abraham. Father, we ask today that you will remember them in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will remember them. You will change their story for good. And your name will be exalted. Take all the glory, Abba Father. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Quickly, we will pray this prayer also. You are here also. You want to trust God. You have heard the word of God. And you want to have a change of heart. Maybe you have abandoned your place of capacity. You have been running a task getter. God doesn't like that. And now you want to retrace back your step. You can say, Lord, I am here. By your mercy, my father, have mercy upon me. You can pray that prayer. A blind man encountered Jesus. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And God showed mercy. If only you will lift up your voice to this afternoon and ask him for mercy, he will show you mercy. Can you talk to God? Say, Father, show me mercy. The Bible says it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It is of God to show mercy. Father, show us your mercy this afternoon. In every area we have got contrary to your word. Where we have not listened, where we have not obeyed. Lord, where we have not waited on you, where we have not trusted you. Where, oh Lord, your will has not been enthroned in our will. Lord, this afternoon we surrender it all to you. By your mercy, oh Lord, we ask, give us a new leaf. Give us another chance. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, glorious God. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word that has come forth. Lord, I pray your word like a seed falls into the hearts of every year, O oh God. And may it grow and flourish in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your word transform the life of every year. And at the end, let us all be doers of your word. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we pray.